We'll continue Chapter 10 with Lecture 3, and in this lecture we're going to cover the IS curve. And so, like I've said, every time we're going to come back to this big picture and see how everything fits together. So, we started with the Keynesian cross, and now we're going to use the Keynesian cross to derive this so-called IS curve. Now, I believe it tells you in the book what IS curve stands for. I really don't know what IS stands for. Don't remember, and so if you've read the book, you're smarter than me. You know something I don't. But... What the IS curve is, is going to be all the combinations of interest and income that result in the goods market clearing. So I don't know what definition they give you in the book. It's probably something very, very close to that, but make sure you can remember that. All right? This is very important. The definition of the IS curve is all the combinations of income and interest that result in the goods market clearing. Okay, by the end of this lecture, I'm going to say that like 500 times, and you're going to be really, really annoyed with it. But believe me, it's important. So, IS curve, a graph of all combinations of interest and income that result in the good markets clearing. Yes, exactly. So you've heard it at least, well, I don't know, four or five times now. So that's an important definition. Just to make my, sure I say this is an important definition, that it will be very hard to pass the test. If you don't remember that definition, I will underline it. Okay, so i.e. actual expenditure or output equals planned expenditure. So essentially what we want to do is we want to find out, well, okay, where do where are we in equilibrium and how does an interest rate play into that? So the first thing is we have to make an adjustment to our planned expenditure function. So the big adjustment is going to be this. Interest is no longer going to be exogenous. It's going to be a function of the real interest rate. So we'll derive the IS curve. And when we do this, we're going to do this kind of graphical derivation. I like to draw a couple of graphs. And the first thing I like to do is line up my axes. So in this case, the Keynesian cross has planned expenditure on the vertical axis and output, actual output, on the horizontal axis. Um, the IS curve has interest rates on the vertical axis and actual output on the horizontal axis. And so I'm going to line them up so that the two axes that are the same are, are stacked on top of one another. Okay, I'm going to put in my equilibrium condition for the Keynesian cross. All right, I'm going to pick an interest rate, R1. And now at R1, I have equilibrium level of output, Y1. Easy peasy. Now what do I want to do? Well, simple. I'm going to pick another interest rate and see what happens. So I pick interest rate 2. Now, how should the investment function respond to interest rates? Well, if interest rates go up, what should investment do? Well, investment should go down. Wait a minute, you say. Why should investment go down? Well, because that interest rate is the cost of investment. Remember, investment is not buying bonds and stocks and other things that maybe yield interest, right? Investment is buying stuff that businesses use to make other stuff, like factories and tools and trucks and other such things. So, if the interest rate goes down, which is what we made the interest rate do, investment should go up because we've reduced the, user, the um, opportunity cost of investing. So if we raise the interest rate, investment should go down because it increases the cost of investment. If we lower the interest rate, investment will go up because it because it decreases the cost of investment. And so we shift the IS curve or the, the potential expenditure or the planned expenditure function up and we get a new equilibrium of Y2. Well, then we connect the dots. And in fact, we shouldn't connect the dots. What we should do is we should to figure this out for each interest rate and then trace them all out. And we could do that, but for right now we're just going to assume the IS curve is linear. And we get the IS curve, and notice that it's downward sloping. Why is it downward sloping? Well, as in the real interest rate lowers, what happens? Investment goes up. If investment goes up, well then we will have a higher equilibrium level of income. 
So a fall in the interest rate motivates firms to increase investment spending, which drives up total planned expenditure. Yes, that's the basic explanation for why the IS curve is negatively sloped. Um, and so, of course, to restore equilibrium, we'll have an increase in equilibrium output. So now, how does fiscal policy affect the IS curve? So here is probably the most important point about how fiscal policy affects the IS curve within the ISLM model, okay, is that government spending and taxes or fiscal policy are always going to shift the IS curve. Now I know we only have an IS curve, but pretty soon we're going to have an LM curve and you're going to have to figure out, so do I shift the LM curve or do I shift the IS curve? Fiscal policy shifts the IS curve. Okay. So, well, we start back with the foundation of the IS curve, which is the Keynesian cross to figure out what happens. So, let's draw this in. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so we have our IS curve. Now, notice we haven't changed the interest rate. Interest rate's going to stay the same, and we just assume we have IS curve 1. So, next. At any value of r, so just just any given value of r. So here we picked r1, but that's arbitrary. Let government spending go up. If government spending goes up, then planned expenditure goes up, and then y goes up. Like this. But did we change the real interest rate? No, we didn't allow the real interest rate to change. So what happens? We have a higher level of income, but at the same interest rate. So either our IS curve is really wonky shaped or, more likely, we had a shift in the IS curve. And that's exactly what happens. So if we have an increase in government spending, we're going to shift the IS curve to the right. If we had a decrease in government spending, we'd shift the IS curve to the left. All right, and the horizontal distance of the IS curve shift is equal to the increase in um, equilibrium output. And so that change is, well, the um, government spending multiplier times the change in government spending. Okay, so we have built the IS curve. Our next stop on this train will be to build the LM curve using the liquidity preference framework, and we will continue that in the next lecture.